In this video, I'm going to show you how to code an ERC721 contract in Solidity. Before we get started, I would like you to go in the description down below and click on this GitHub link. Everything that we're going to be discussing in this tutorial is going to be outlined in this readme, so feel free to check it out. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask them in the comments section down below. Also, be sure to join our Discord. You are free to use this contract in any code that is posted on the GitHub. We're going to be writing this using the ERC721 contract defined by Open Zeppelin. Alright, first thing you want to do is open up Open Zeppelin Contracts Wizard, select ERC721, and enter your name here and followed by the symbol on the right. Then we're going to set a base URI. This is going to be where all the token URIs are stored. In a later video, I'll show you how to do this using IPFS. And for features, you wanna select mintable, pausable, enumerable, and inside of mintable, select auto increment IDs. Once we have that complete, we can go up here and click on this open and remix button. Inside of remix, you want to select the proper Solidity compiler version. You can compile the contract by saving the file or pressing this compile button. And here is our contract down below. We're now going to rename the Solidity file name. The next step is to add code comment sections for different sections of our code. This is optional but highly recommended. Okay, now go to the safe mint function and remove the only owner modifier so that anyone can call safe mint. Now we're going to define a mint price of 0.05 Ether for each token. In the safe mint function, we're going to add a require statement saying that the message value has to be greater than or equal to the mint price. And if this is not true, we're going to print out an error message saying not enough Ether sent. If you get an error in your Solidity file, it's going to show up on the left side. So here it says we need to add the payable modifier. Next, let's go in the constructor and increment the token counter. By default, the token counter starts at zero, but we want this to start at one, which is a more natural way of looking at the token IDs. Okay, now let's create the withdraw function. This is going to be a function that only the owner can call and withdraw all of the funds from the account. We're going to first require that the address of this uh, balance is greater than zero. If it's less than zero, then it's going to say the balance is zero and there's nothing to withdraw. Then we'll call the transfer function to transfer all of the funds to the owner. Next thing you want to do is define the maximum supply of all of your tokens. In this case, it's going to be 10,000 unique NFTs. And then in the safement function, we're going to add in the corresponding require statement. So we can copy this line of code, duplicate, and change up a couple of values. So we're going to say 
we're going to make sure that the total supply is less than the maximum supply. If it's greater than, that means that we've gone over 10,000 and that there's no more tokens to be minted. Before we deploy, go to your base URI function and add a forward slash at the end of the string. All right, let's compile and deploy our contract. Press compile and then go to deploy and run transactions. Select JavaScript VM, select the uh, owner accounts. This is going to be the first one. And then right here, select the contract happy monkey and then press deploy. And here you can see on the right side, this is the transaction uh, debug window. It's going to show you all of the transaction information for this. Let's now turn our focus to the read and write functions. So anything that is blue is a read function and anything in orange is a write. So example, we can click on these and see what's the name of the token, who's the owner, what's the symbol name, what's the total supply, and so on. Here I'm going to demonstrate how to change a Boolean value. We click on pause and then we check the state of paused and now it's true. And now we can press unpause to change it back to false. Let's now switch to the second account and mint an NFT. This value right here is message.value, which is a global property. We need to set this to 0 0.05 Ethereum, which is going to be this amount in way. Just base this. And now we find the safe mint functions and we need to call the address right here and then press transact. Now we can examine the transaction and we see the address to and who's it coming from. The from address is the actual contract that was deployed. So when you deploy a contract, it gets its own unique address. You can check who owns a token by calling owner of function and passing in the token ID. In this case, this is the second address that owns the first token. And if we do zero, it's going to tell us right here that this uh, does not exist. And same thing for two, because two hasn't been minted. We're now going to switch to the third account and transfer NFT token number one from address two to address three using the transfer from function. So go down here and look at transfer from and to and pass in the token ID, which is going to be number one. Transact and it's going to tell us that the transfer color is not the owner nor approved because we're still in the third account. So we have to go up and switch over to the second account who actually owns the NFT. And we go down here and press transact. We just transferred token ID number one from address two to address three. The last function that we're going to look at is the withdraw function that only the owner can call. Let's switch to the first account and call the withdraw function. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll be posting more videos on Web3 in the future.